also more likely to identify as conservative, 62 versus 14 percent, as well as independent, 33 versus 21, and Republican, 44 versus 12 percent. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. So, I, but I guess that that holds with my whole point about people just being uncomfortable with difference. If you live in a small town or rural area, you're far away from all that, and you don't really get a chance to meet or see people. So you get your information from TV or movies or whatever, and so on and so forth. Okay, expander. Immigration expanders are mostly white American, interesting, 61%, but are more likely to be African American, 12, to 9, 12 versus 9%, Latino, 17 versus 8%, and Asian American, 7 versus 3%, than restrictionists are. Expanders are more likely than restrictionists to have a college degree, 36 versus 22, including postgraduate degree, 17 versus 8%, and higher income, 20 versus 12%, earned more than $100,000 annually. Expanders also tend to be younger, 56 versus 45%, are under 45. They generally live in more densely populated areas. 50% versus 25% live in a city. They are somewhat more likely to live in the Northeast, 20 versus 17, and West, 28 versus 22. Expanders are more likely to identify as liberal, 49 versus 7%, and Democrat, 60 versus 13. Uh-huh, yeah. <clears throat> well, that... Again, that plays out that people who live in more densely populated areas where there are more immigrants are more used to immigrants who say, yeah, hey, this is great, and they want more of it. All right, maintainers. Those who want to maintain immigration levels are similar in some ways to expanders and in other ways to restrictionists. Hmm. Like expanders, maintainers are more racially diverse, 61% white, 13% black, 19% Latino and 6% Asian American than restrictionists. But like restrictionists, maintainers are less likely than expanders to have college degrees, 24%. A plurality of maintainers identifies as politically moderate, 39%, and democratic, 39%. The remainder are split between identifying as conservative, 32%, and liberal, 22%. These three groups differ in their level of social trust, with restrictionists the least trustful of others. Uh, restrictionists are the most likely to agree that you can't be too careful in dealing with people. 73% of them say that. Followed by 69% of maintainers. Expanders are least likely to agree, 57%, that most people can't be trusted. Expanders are more likely to know many immigrants personally. Nearly two-thirds say they know a lot or some immigrants. Restrictionists are about 20 points less likely to say they know many immigrants. Maintainers fall in between, with about half saying they know many immigrants. Furthermore, expanders are much more likely to personally be first- or second-generation immigrants compared to restrictionists. Ah, so let's repeat that part. Expanders are much more likely to be personally first- or second-generation immigrants, compared to restrictionists, only 13% of them, and maintainers, only 25%. Similarly, expanders are, much, are more than twice as likely as restrictionists to be fluent in another language besides English. Hmm. So this, this is interesting. In their own words, these are quotes from expanders, maintainers, and restrictionists. So the expanders say, answer to the question, in a few words, can you explain why you'd prefer to increase immigration? Number one, immigrants enrich our country by bringing new experiences, beliefs, and foods. <laughs> People love that food. Most of them have a strong work ethic and truly want to make America a better place. We need to create a better path for citizenship. I could have written that. Number two, my grandparents were immigrants and so were so many I grew up with. If immigration was not happening then, I wouldn't live in this country now. Number three, this country is founded and almost entirely populated by immigrants and the de descendants of immigrants. You can't just come inside and lock the door behind you. 
Next. Recent immigrants and non-citizens contribute more and commit fewer crimes than mo- than the average of all U.S. residents. They make our nation more economically competitive. Most refugees trying to immigrate are fleeing conditions the U.S. created. We owe them asylum and a path to citizenship. Now, there is a knowledgeable person. That person listens to the show, perhaps. <laughs> Probably not. There are people trying to immigrate to America because they are seeking asylum, are in danger, or want a better life for their families. America is in a position to help, and immigrants help stimulate the economy. And finally, immigration is good for the economy. It brings young, dynamic entrepreneurs with a strong work ethic. Our population is getting older. We need more young people to add to the tax base and contribute to Social Security. Oh, let's hear from the maintainers. Again, in a few words, can you explain why you'd prefer to keep immigration at its present level? The first one says, The current level of immigration is proven to be sustainable while having a generally positive impact on the national economy. Changing this level has the potential to alter some of these variables and break the equilibrium. Keeping immigration at the current level will ensure that the country has the infrastructure in place to assimilate new migrants, process entry, availability of basic needs, and keep the borders secure. A controlled flow is healthy. Our country should welcome immigrants who come through legal means. Next we have, I think that immigration is great. Our nation grows stronger when it consists of citizens of diverse beliefs and backgrounds. However, The U.S. doesn't really take care of all of its citizens as it is, so I don't really think immigration should increase right now. Well, they have a point there. I mean, I I think it's kind of, anyway, (laughs) I'm not going to comment on all of these. But, uh, you know, that that one, that, that at least there's, you know, some thinking going on there. Okay. The USA cannot provide jobs for 100% of its citizens and residents as is. More legal immigration means more unemployed people collecting government assistance. Uh, no. Immigrants need to assimilate into American society, but huge influxes always seem to end up with people in enclaves where they don't learn English. Also, too many coming in on visas take work from citizens because businesses are allowed to hire them for less. We can't flood the hiring market with visa holders. Note, I am talking about legal immigration. Illegal immigration must be stopped. And finally, I think in general, the government needs to take time to be more cautious about who they are letting into the country. I'm not talking about race, religion, sexual preference, etc. I'm advocating a more thorough vetting system. More thoroughly vetting what, (laughs) exactly? Anyway, it's interesting to hear these things. I, I, I am too tempted to make comments on some of them, and I should just shut up and read. But anyway. Okay, restrictionist. Well, I'm going to have trouble reading these. In a few words, can you explain why you'd prefer to decrease immigration? All right, number one. We are not here to solve society's problems in other countries or rescue the world. Each country should take care of its own. When each small unit is healthy, the whole is healthy. Healthy families make healthy communities, which make healthy states, which make a healthy country. Teach other countries to get rid of corruption and enable citizens to manage their own lives while providing some basic structure. Let each country be unique. I'll let that last sentence speak for itself. Next, immigration should be decreased because millions upon millions of people from south of the border have invaded our country and have not assimilated, instead turning us into the countries they left. (laughs) Okay. I mean, some of these are it's just, I hear this stuff all the time, and it's kind of funny to hear it again here. Uh, immigration should be decreased because our country cannot financially sustain an infinite amount of immigrants. Further, the Democratic Party is only in favor of packing our country with illegal immigrants for votes. Highly immoral. That sounds like something Trump would write. I don't have a problem with immigration as long as it's done legally. doesn't answer the question. Uh, If you go through legal immigration and can contribute to society, you are more than welcome. If you're trying to illegally enter our country, you should be turned away, and we should not take refugees from countries that we know hate us. 
Next, most current immigrants are low-skill workers who will require welfare, Medicaid, and social assistance. This drives down the wages of low-skilled American citizens and reduces the amount of benefits available to help our own citizens. And finally, several illegal immigrants have been convicted of dangerous crimes in my state. Many support the cartel. Also, they come to live off free to live free off hard-working American taxpayers' dollars. Safety and security are the main reason. Wow, this is really interesting to to hear these things because you have, I mean, granted, I am biased. So we'll we'll accept the conclusions. I am biased towards the conclusions. But if you think of what they were saying, expanders all had positive. Uh, optimistic comments, uh, well thought out. Maintainers also had some pretty well thought out comments. Some were not quite as uh, knowledgeable or educated about the system as they could be, and some were kind of simplistic, but generally they had, you know, good reasons. And the restrictionists are all just saying random stuff that is not based on anything. It's, it's emotional. It's all emotional, <coughs> and it doesn't address any any of the facts of the situation. It addresses an emotional reaction to the situation. So that's really interesting. I mean, it, I kind of already knew this, but it's interesting to read it like this. Anyway, I will continue. Um, to continue, an overwhelming majority, 91% of Americans welcome immigration to the United States. Very few. Only 9% think no immigration would be good for the country. Instead, 68% prefer a low level of immigration, and 23% want a high level of immigration. Majorities of immigrants and native-born Americans both say they prefer low levels of immigration over either high or no immigration. Notably, majorities of Democrats, Independents, and Republicans share a preference for low levels of immigration. Of course, people being, mean different things by low or high levels of immigration. The survey told respondents that the U.S. currently admits about one million immigrants per year and then asked respondents about how many should be admitted annually. Among those who prefer a low level of immigration, 46% selected a number less than 100,000 per year. Another 42% selected 500,000 to a million per year and 10% selected more than a million per year. Among those who prefer a high level of immigration, 27% uh, selected less than 1 million a year, 22% selected 1 million, and the majority, 51%, said more than 1 million per year, including 20% who said as many as want to come. Among all Americans, when asked how many immigrants should be admitted to the U.S. each year, 60% said less than 1 million per year, about a fifth said about a million, and another fifth preferred more than a million, including 8% who said as many immigrants as want to come should be allowed to the U.S. The fact that one million sounds like a large number may have influenced answers. However, out of 300 million people, one million is 0.33%. These numbers do not vary dramatically across racial groups. Support for increasing immigration beyond 1 million people a year reaches 20% among white Americans, 18% among black Americans, 17% among Latino Americans, and 27% among Asian Americans. Opinion does vary by education level. Americans with postgraduate degrees are th about three times as likely as those with high school degrees or less to support admitting more than 1 million immigrants per year makes sense. They know what they're talking about, or they understand the question and the numbers involved, and other people are less likely to. I'm not saying that you have to have a, a high level of education to understand this stuff, but a higher level of education will give you a, the tools with which to judge some of these things that may be lacking in those with a lower level of education or who have paid less attention to the subject. That's all I'm saying. Okay. A majority of Americans agree that the ability to immigrate to a new country is a human right for all people. 
Democrats and Libertarians are more likely than Independents and Republicans to agree. African Americans, Latino Americans, and Asian Americans also are more likely than White Americans to agree. Young people are more likely, are much more likely to agree, 64%, uh, among 18 to 29 year olds compared to 39% among those over age 65. Wow, big difference. So young people say it's a human right. Old people say, Rah. although most people believe immigration is a human right, only a third want to eliminate all restrictions on immigration and allow anyone to move here after the pandemic. Furthermore, only about a third want to increase immigration from its current level. Taking the results together suggests that people feel empathy for those who wish to immigrate to a new country to seek better opportunities, but they may not be comfortable with many people doing it all at once. Which is a reasonable-ish uh, way of thinking about it. Okay. The ideal level of immigration divides the democratic coalition. Strong liberals are nearly 20 points more likely to want to increase immigration compared to moderate liberals, 71 to 52%. <coughs> Excuse me. And while 65% of strong liberals want a high level of immigration, a majority of moderate liberals, 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 let me try that again, a majority of moderate liberals want a low level of immigration. Furthermore, Strong liberals stand out as one of the only groups with a majority who favor removing all restrictions on immigration compared to less than half of moderate liberals. In open-ended responses, many moderate Democrats revealed that they wanted more immigration than occurred during the Trump administration, but aren't fully comfortable with a high level either. As one middle-aged Democratic man said, I think we need to increase immigration because Trump decreased it too much. I would like to see Obama levels of immigration. In contrast, one Democrat who wants to greatly increase immigration explained, we should have open borders. By allowing high immigration, we are showing that we accept other cultures and want to lead the world as it comes together in diplomacy. Others pointed to economic benefits, diversity, and the belief that America has always been a place for people to get away and start a new life. Huh. Okay. So what I'm getting, and editorial aside, what I'm getting from this is that a lot of your opinion on immigration depends on your level of education. And again, by that I mean it could be self-taught. You could be interested in the topic and have learned a lot about it through observation and, and study, or you may have gone to college and just learned about things generally. Um, <clears throat> but it seems to me that a lot of, uh, you know, the opinions here, for example, the number of people that should be let in every year, that's just dependent on how much it, a million sounds like. They, they don't really have a sense of <clears throat> how many people that is compared to the existing population or anything. It's just, it sounds like a lot. So, oh, I think eh, less than a million. That, that's too many. You know, it's just, <clears throat> it's just not understanding the numbers and, and the size and scale of the problem that uh, I think exists. So that's what I mean by education. Is It's an, a, a, the tools to understand or the, the requisite knowledge to understand what's going on. Anyway, to continue. Many academics believe there may be an inverse relationship between migration levels and welfare spending. The idea goes, if immigration goes up, public support for welfare spending declines or rate of increase slows. The survey asked Americans if they had to choose, would they rather have more immigration and a government that provides fewer services and benefits or less immigration, and a government that provides more services and benefits. By a three-to-one margin, Americans prefer less immigration and more government services to more immigration and fewer government services. <clears throat> I wonder, though, if they're misleading people with that question, because the two don't necessarily go hand-in-hand. Hand. Anyway, 
but I guess they're just finding out how people think about this, not necessarily. Uh, I don't know. That that seems like a possibly misleading question. Okay. Among immigration expanders, only 38% would continue to support more immigration and 60% would want less. If more immigration came to the ex at the expense of welfare spending, among immigration restrictionists, 17% would opt for more immigration if that meant smaller government. <clears throat> Excuse me. Among partisans, while at first 47% of Democrats support increasing immigration, only 25% would support it if more immigration meant fewer government services. <clears throat> Excuse me. Conversely, support for more immigration rises among Republicans and slightly among independents if more immigration means the government would provide fewer services. Furthermore, strong conservatives are more likely than strong liberals to prefer more immigration and fewer services. These results indicate that progressives' commitment to liberalized immigration is tenuous if social spending is at stake. Further, conservatives may be more open to immigration if social spending were restrained. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm, I won't comment. <clears throat> In addition, Latino Americans are more likely than white Americans, Asian Americans, and black Americans to favor more immigration and less welfare spending to less immigration and more welfare spending. Okay, the survey found that Americans estimate that immigrants comprise about 40% of the U.S. population. This is notable because the actual share of foreign-born is about 14%. If one were to include the foreign-born and their American-born children, that number rises to about 26%. 26% of the population. Either way, Americans considerably overestimate how many immigrants live here. Yeah. Hmm. First-generation immigrants estimate that 56% of the U.S. are immigrants. Second-generation estimate 49%, and third-generation and higher estimate 36%. People living in cities estimate 49%, while those in suburbs and rural areas assume 37%. White Americans estimate 35%. Black Americans estimate 47%. Strong liberals come the closest to being accurate with an estimate of 28%, while conservatives estimate 40% is at the national average. Most Americans want to maintain current immigration levels or increase them across world regions. However, some Americans prefer immigration from other regions more than others. Oh, <laughs> my brain just totally <laughs> derailed for a second. Let me just start the whole thing over again. Most Americans want to maintain current immigration levels or increase them across world regions. However, some Americans prefer immigration from some regions more than others. About three-fourths of Americans say the number of immigrants is either about right or too few from Europe, 74%, Asia, 72%, and Africa, 71%. Somewhat feel, fewer feel similarly about immigration from the Middle East, 61%, and Latin America, 55%. The share of Americans who say there are too many immigrants from these regions are as follows. From Latin America, 45%. From the Middle East, 38%. From Africa, 28%. From Asia, 28%. From Western Europe, 24%. And from Eastern Europe, 24%. Gallup first started asking this question in 1984. Examining the historical data reveals that more Americans today say too few immigrants come from each of these regions compared to 1984. These results demonstrate that Americans do not support for increasing immigration from any particular region of the world. However, more Americans want to decrease than increase immigration from Latin America and the Middle East. Americans do not give a clear preference to European countries where many of their family trees originated. Instead, about as many want more as want fewer immigrants from Western and Eastern Europe, Africa, and Asia. Furthermore, the data reveal that only about 2% of respondents say they want less immigration from Latin America, 
the Middle East, Africa, and Asia, but want more or to maintain current immigration from Europe. More common is that 15% of Americans who say there are too many immigrants from all six of the regions asked about. Among Republicans, 26% say there are too many immigrants from all regions compared to 5% of Democrats and 19% of Independents. Very few Republicans, 3%, expressed a clear preference for European immigration, similar to Democrats, 1%, and Independents, 2%. That's really interesting. So that kind of pushes a, a little bit against my notion of anti-immigration being uh, often based with racist views, because that doesn't sound very racist to me. It just sounds like it's more, what would you call it, like xenophobic, maybe? Just fear of the other. It doesn't matter what kind of other you are. Just if you are other, I don't want you around. Hmm. That's really interesting. Boy, there's a lot more to this, too. Uh, I may have to pick this up. I'm kind of running out of time here. Um, okay, yeah, I, uh, I'm just going to have to... I'm just going to bookmark this and, and come at it again. Um on my next show because there's a lot of interesting information here and it's really it's, it's really rich and I'd like to do it justice rather than uh, try to rush through or just find highlights from I don't even think I've read half of this thing yet um, but anyway uh, so this is this is really interesting it's good to go through I like this kind of survey because they they really covered a lot of different ways or they tried to cover a lot of different ways that people think about immigrants to get a sense of who's thinking what and why. And, you know, of the expansionists and restrictionists and maintainers, you know, the, the reasons were pretty much what you would expect, pretty standard stuff. And I don't know whether they just chose that because it's like those were the things that stuck out to them as, as being as typifying the reactions of those uh, groups or if they chose it at random. I don't know how they made the choice for what they included in this, but it was interesting to see. And it is interesting to compare all of this stuff and to see, you know, how people are thinking and what kinds of things they're thinking. Because uh, really, a, long, a while ago, I remember reading an article that stated basically the more you know about immigration, the more you understand what all is involved, the more positive you are about it. And this is definitely following and supporting that notion that the more you understand it, the more immigrants you know, the more that you live amongst, the more supportive you are of immigration. And the less you know, and the less immigrants that you have uh, been involved with, the less supportive you are. <laughs> I mean, it just seems pretty, pretty clear from this. But anyway, I'll have to get, I'll get to the rest of this next time. Um, anyway, this has been CU Immigration here on WRFU LP Urbana, 104.5 FM and UPTV. And hopefully we, you will join us again next time and we'll have the rest of this story and some more information for you. In the meantime, take care and be well.